the top meet of the weekend in NCAA women's gymnastics. It's number five Michigan visiting the reigning national champions and the number one ranked Oklahoma Sooners. As we welcome you into the Lloyd Noble Center in Norman, Oklahoma, Meg McDonald here with Olympian and Sooner legend Kelly Garrison Funderburg. We have a meet on our hands tonight. Both teams coming into tonight undefeated. Now let's start with Oklahoma. They're coming off a nation best 198.45 versus number six Denver last week. Kelly, how can the Sooners top that score? Oh, I'm not sure they can really top that score. However, I know that they're going to be confident because they've had such an amazing undefeated season. And they have two of their key players back in, Olivia Troutman and Maggie Nichols doing the all-around. But the main thing I think they have to focus on tonight is not letting their emotions take over. They can't be mentally complacent. They've got to stay in their game. Now, Michigan just went back-to-back -back weeks of not just scoring season highs, but program highs. Well, Kelly, are are we on upset alert tonight? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm telling you, Michigan looks amazing. And they have the difficulty and the finesse. They could possibly upset the Sooners. I think this is going to be a tougher competition than most people realize. It's really one. It's going to be a nail biter. Three seniors will be honored tonight for Oklahoma. That's Maggie Nichols, Bree Showers, and Jade Dagovega, which brings us to our Sooners to watch in both Maggie Nichols and Jade Dagovega. Well, it's so hard to think about saying goodbye to a Maggie Nichols. I mean, she has been the Michael Jordan of gymnastics and she she's just going to be so mad she has the finesse i can't say enough about this uh, outstanding legend and now, moving to jade yeah jade she's top of her game right now i mean to finish so high up on how she's finishing her senior year it's a little bit unusual she's just blossoming i love watching her her confidence go get her not just in sport but also in life she's amazing all right it's number five versus number one oklahoma will start on vault michigan on the bars keep it here on oklahoma women's gymnastics all right let's take a look at what to look for what the judges are looking for on vault kelly first well of course they look for the height and the distance off of the table and then the form of course body position nice and tight and squeezing legs together toes pointed in the air and a stuck landing and let's move on to bars what are the judges looking for on the event that michigan will be competing on first well, one thing they're going to be looking for is having um, two release moves. They're also looking for a lot of swing um, and uh, transitioning from one bar to the, to the next. Hitting the handstands is a key component. Um, and then also the body position when they land on the ground and then not moving their feet, which is considered the stick. So everyone watching out there, this is what the, student, what the judges will take off. But as we get going, Olivia Troutman, the sophomore for Oklahoma, will start the meet out. She is coming off back to back tens on this event. We'll see what she can do here tonight. Right. The Sooners have ten, six 10 of start values. This is just one of them right here. Oh, close. Tiny hop, but still a great start for the Sooners. Oklahoma, one of the only teams in the nation that is able to compete 6-10-0 start values. Really makes a difference, Meg, as, as you and I both know, is when they start with that 10-0, then they just have a little bit of an advantage because they can score just a touch higher. As we head back over to bars, this is Abby High School, also a sophomore. She's from Charlotte, North Carolina, trained at Southeastern Gymnastics. One thing I've noticed watching them, not just in warm-up and some of their other competitions, is their execution is exquisite. Hitting the handstand, they're really fighting for everything. You'll notice right there, the legs are perfectly together and tight and knees are straight and, oh, close to a stick. They're working, everybody's fighting for that stick. And they, sometimes it's better just to kind of let it happen. And that's so, so hard to do as an athlete. 
Here's Allie Stern, another sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. She's competed in vault every single meet this season, and she's actually ranked 12th in the country on this event. We'll see the exact same vault we saw from Olivia Troutman in that Yurchenko one and a half, and she's a career high 9975 on this event. Wow, she had such an outstanding vault a couple of meets ago where, I mean, she landed her, her mouth just dropped open because she nailed it. <laughs> it was so fun to watch because it was just um, raw emotion, just such enthusiasm. The crowd went wild. And speaking of crowd, the crowd in here is exciting tonight. They're loud and uh, boisterous. It's fun here, right here at Lloyd Noble. Here we go, Allie Stern. Close, but again, that hot. That's not how the centers want. They need some sticks. Both teams are looking for that stick. That's going to be a big determined point for them to win. Olivia Troutman goes 9925. As we head over to bars, this is Maddie Mariani. She's missed the last two meets because of an injury. Huge to Kachev, wow. Absolutely. That's one of those release moves that they're looking for. Here's another one. Bail right to handstand. A little quick, but she did hit it. And right here, looking to be straight up and down in vertical. And double A, perfect landing. Perfect, that's exactly what they want. Great bar routine. All right, Kelly, let's bring you to our keys to the meet, brought to you by Riverwind. Well, I mentioned this earlier is controlling the emotions as Jade is getting ready to perform. Speaking of a senior, I mean, she is very intense and um, she does have to uh, hone that in of not being too hard on herself. They are looking for sticks. I said this earlier, the more the sticks, the more likely that team's gonna win because these teams are so comparable in difficulty and execution. Jade is ranked number eight in the nation on vault. She will do another Yurchenko one and a half in a laid out position. She can really fly on this vault. Look at the distance. Oh, 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 crowd is excited. Wow. just love for her to finish her career scoring a 10 somewhere whether it's the bar on the bars uneven bars or vault not quite here you see her feet just shift yeah they just shifted back a hair maybe a little more than a hair because <laughs> they did she did and um so that's not going to be a 10 but here's abby brenner the sophomore from maple grove minnesota now she started off her bar routine with a perfect handstand. Now notice how she does two release moves back to back. So she caught one and flew or um, swung immediately into the next one. That gives you more bonus. Here's her dismount, double leg. Again, not a perfect landing, but real close. They'll, they'll take it. Abby High School goes 9.825 in the leadoff, and Maddie Mariani went also 9.825 following her as Anastasia Webb gets set to compete yet another year go one and a half for the Sooners, the junior. Anastasia, very wow, do you see that pop off the vault, the height, that's the amplitude that they're looking for. They're looking to see how high the body rises up in the air off of the table, and she really showed that off. Allie Stern scored a 9.875 in the second spot. Sierra Brooks from Michigan gets set. She's ranked 10th in the all around and has a big dismount. Just wait for this one. She certainly does. I love watching her lines. Nice Pike Yeager. Beautiful toe on toe off, hit the handstand. Oh, it landed, just landed perfect. Pop bounced into that handstand. A little shy of that one. However, here's the dismount we were talking about. A pull out. Oh, so close. Yeah. And so difficult. It, she makes it look super easy. She's like, ah, I think I'll just throw in a pull on this last flip here. Those are the dismounts that you see in the Olympic Games and the World Championships, and the fact that she's competing that year tonight is really impressive. And that she's a freshman. 
And we'll head back over to Maggie Nichols on vault, one of the seniors competing for the Sooners on her senior night. Now she can put up a big number. She generally finds this landing. Right. The crowd is just anticipating a stick. There it is! Speechless. She's incredible. I know. That's what their centers. I mean, they have some really great vaulters, but to, to nail that just now are the landing every single time. It's almost expected, which is insane. I know. And the crowd was expecting it. They're, I mean, I think they would have been so disappointed had they not, she not stuck it on her senior night. Yep. And her teammates are going crazy as Gabby Wilson is on the bars and the crowd is going crazy. It looks like it's a 10 for Maggie Nichols again. What a way to start out her senior night here versus Michigan. She is a, one amazing kid. And to know, imagine trying to do your bar routine right now with this loud crowd. It's like Olympic level. And for her to pull that off and just nail it, she had a great routine, a nice landing, beautiful form. Another perfect 10. I think that might be her 22nd. Is that, is that yep. what you have down? That's number 22. The record is 28. And she is just inching closer and closer to that record. Now, Evie Schofer will also do a Yurchenko one and a half, but it's a little different. It's not in that laid out position. It's in a tucked position. And it's somewhat new for her this season. That's right. It's interesting because as she was training over the summer, Coach Kendler said, hey, um, let's let's work with this a little bit different. Let's try something a little bit different. And said, why don't you just tuck that? And it's actually kind of hard to do a tuck I agree. Hole and a half because you're, sometimes you get behind your, your legs or even in front of your legs when you're twisting. And so most people think, oh, that's an easier vault. No, no, not necessarily. Here it goes. Holy cow. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, that was amazing. She did great. And it's because she had that block. You saw how much higher she yep. went than normal. That gave her the time to find that landing. All right, let's update you on some scores. Of course, Maggie Nichols goes 10. Anastasia Webb, 9925. And Jade Degovea also goes 995. So great start for the Sooners on vault. So close to that stick. As we head back over to bars, this is an athlete to look out for. Natalie Wojcik, ranked 14th in the country. Big oh. Delta. Wow. Oh, just misses bad. it. You know, she, well, I was just going to say, she is one that everyone needs to memorize her name mm -hmm. because she has big skills and beautiful skills. Um, I've never seen her miss that. I mean, that was, you can see. You know how hard that is to come back. You kind of lose your rhythm. Mm -hmm. What I love is that beautiful line, the toe point. A bit. And she cut nice fight. I love that she fought for her landing. And because she, when she let go of that bar just now, I kind of thought, yikes, she's kind of ping a little early. Yeah, but she, she stuck it. I mean, that shows such poise for her. So Michigan will likely be able to drop that score. Here's Reagan Smith, exhibition. Good, your chinkle full. Not worth a 10-0 start. But that is one of the best balls I've actually seen Reagan do. And I know that just getting that confidence and being in the lineup is going to give her more um, well, confidence going forward. So I think this summer working some of the harder balls where she could be at that 10-0 start. She's so determined and she's such a work, she has such a work ethic. It surprised me if she doesn't upgrade over the summer. Here's Lauren Farley, just competing in exhibition routine for the Wolverines. Abby Brenner goes 9825. Sierra Brooks goes 985. Excuse me. Here we go. Beautiful blind right into. Up another Pike Jaeger. This is why it's important to have an exhibition routine to get that practice in. 
So when you're in a competition, you know what to do. If you make a mistake, she just needs need some numbers, and this is a perfect time to do that. All right, quick correction. Abby Brenner goes 9.825. Sierra Brooks goes 9.85. So here she's getting right back up. That's the second release move. Nice. Good swing and good swing through the bottom into the double layout. So like you said, um, you know, that score will not count. I mean, she did fall, of course, but it was a great opportunity for her to get some practice in a pressure competition. All right, what a start to this competition. Oklahoma will head to the bars and Michigan will head to the vault and we will update you with scores on the back end of this break. The hair was a lot blonder. <laughs> that was pretty good though. It's so hard to explain how I felt during this moment because this was like my first ever bar routine ever. I mean, I worked the whole summer. I wasn't in the bar line of freshman, sophomore, junior year. I worked the entire summer to break this lineup. So this routine felt really good, but I was also extremely nervous. <laughs> but that right there was an amazing feeling. <laughs> That face. <laughs> oh my goodness. I really understand what people mean when they say I look extremely intense. I get it now. Senior night for Jade Degovea as she reflects on the first time she competed as a student. this building now Miley Hermelin welcome back to the LNC how does it feel you guys spent a lot of time here you and your husband Anthony who played baseball here how does it feel to be back in this building it's great to get back you know in front of Sooner Nation again and, and get to see everybody um, you know that we love and miss um, you know just obviously now here for Michigan I'm just super excited to be back it's been it's been great so far yeah, wearing different colors than the last time people saw you here inside this building. You competed for KJ for four years. You were on her staff. How did she inspire you and help you kind of get into this coaching business? Yeah, you know, really just my whole four years, actually the whole six that I was here, um, KJ, Lou, and Tom just really inspired me and, like, built up my passion, my love for the sport, and to share it with other people. So just super grateful that they were on my side and, you know, able to help me get, get to where I am now. Do you sometimes hear some of the things you say coming from KJ, some of KJ coming out through you? Sometimes, yeah, I do, and that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. She's She's got the accolades, right? Last thing for you, obviously a big night for both of these teams. For Michigan, How? what kind of opportunity does facing the number one team in the country, your alma mater here, present for you guys? I think it's really great experience to get the girls out here, um, to get them excited, being in an electric atmosphere. Um, you know, against, like you said, my alma mater. So I'm just really, really excited for them to just have a really great meet and um, to be here in front of everyone, friends and family. Miley, great to see you back. We appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much. Next Back to you. That was Abby Heisko. A little bit of a flare in her, your Chaco full. I love to see that. One thing you're going to notice about Michigan um, tonight on ball is that they have two Euro fulls and then four Euro full and a half. And that's where that um, can sometimes can make up the difference. As we head over to bars, Olivia Troutman will lead the Sooners off. A new routine this season, two completely different release moves. That one included, and there's the second. Well, it certainly takes talent to be able to do that and a lot of hard work over the summer to develop the confidence to know that you will hit that routine when it counts. She is one of those girls uh, or young ladies who can do that. Leading off the Sooners. Wow, what a great dismount. Nailing it. I'm sure Coach Kendler might have had a conversation with them about <laughs> landings after watching the vault. Oh, you only stuck about one of six bar dismounts last week versus Denver. 
They're off to a good start with that Olivia Troutman stuck dismount. They, they certainly are on bars. They did, however, stick one out of six vaults today. So um, I know that that's something that is not exactly on their plan. Here's freshman Nicoletta Kulos. She'll compete at Yurchenko full. She really has the ability to get up off of the vaulting table. It's nice to see that. And of course, she's tall, so that certainly helps. But I love watching her lift. We will see more Tenno starts for Michigan later on in the lineup, but they have a few, so it's, and they're pretty impressive. They absolutely are impressive. I've noticed the body line and the flare, and you're going to get to see that in just a little bit. Here's Carrie Thomas, the junior from Coral Springs, Florida. Career high 995 on bars. She is great. It's nice to have Carrie back in the lineup. She's an All American on this event. She was only out for a couple of competitions, just nursing some ailments, but. I know that the Sooners really want her and need her back in to give them the consistency and the confidence to win another national championship. Olivia Troutman scored a 9-9 in the leadoff position. Abby High School goes 9-7-7-5 on vault in their leadoff position. Here's a look at KJ in her 14th season at Oklahoma. Look at that record, 391 to 53 and three at OU. She's the only active NCAA head coach to win a national championship. As we head back over to vault, Abby Brenner. So here's the first Yurchinka full that you're going to see from Michigan. And it's nice, watch. Big, oh, wow. and a great landing. That's super. Yeah. That's gonna get them right back on track. They were totally off of vault, but to, when you nail it, it just kind of energizes everyone to say, gosh, we got this. Take a look at it one more time. She's tied for 15th on this event in the country. Huge vault. What a great vault for her. Mm -hmm. As Kulos goes 9.8 and Carrie Thomas goes 9.875. And here is Anastasia Webb, one of the all-arounders. She's competed in the all-around every single meet this season for the Sooners. And she'll start this routine out with a ginormous pack salto. Watch how high. I mean, just to catch the bar to have the strength when you're coming down. Oh, lovely. She really has a flair about the way she does her gymnastics. New dismount and a perfect landing. Such a unique dismount. A double front with a half turn. Able to find that landing. If you just do a double front, it's a blind landing. This kind of sets her up to be able to see right. the stick. Right here, you see it right here. She goes double front, and right here she sees the floor. You can see her eyes looking down, and it makes that landing so much easier. Wow, listen to this. Abby Brenner goes 9975. One of the judges gave her a 10. Let's watch this here. finding these landings on these 10-0 start vaults. Wow. But they are ranked, Michigan is ranked number four on vault in the country. So I'm not a bit surprised that they're bringing it and getting their confidence back, getting their mojo. Like, we still are in this. And that's what we expected tonight. We expected good gymnastics, and Michigan is delivering on vault. Here's a look at another one of the seniors as Anastasia Webb goes 9925. This is Jade Dagovea, who has made her spot known on this event, has not competed on bars until this season, her senior year, and you never hear of that. She and she's a rock on this event. Well, to be number six in the country. Pretty good, Kelly. <laughs> Beautiful high. I Jaeger right into Tawan. Here's her second um, release move, Pac Salto. But she's just so long. Now she's going to look for this dismount. Don't be too anxious. Oh, needed a little more, a little more throw on the ball. Routine for Jade. Great for the Sooners. It's not the stick, but that's okay. 
That's the skill that she really had to work on in the summer to be able to crack this bar lineup. As we head back over to Vault, this is Natalie Wojcik. Let's see if she can bounce back after the fall on bar. She does a nice Yurchenko one and a half. Sure does, and look here. Oh! And then three in a row. Three sticks in a row on a blind landing like that. I mean, I'll be, you know, yeah, she sat a little bit lower than probably what um, is what they want. However, to nail that landing and not take the deduction of a step is fantastic. I think Michigan will take back to back to back stuck landings. That is impressive. <laughs> and they have another one coming up that can do the exact same thing. That's exactly right. That's Gabby Wilson who will anchor the lineup as Jade Dagovea goes 9.875. That brings us to freshman phenom Reagan Smith on the bars. Reagan is really starting to find herself as a sinner. She has such, whoa, so, that was so close. It was perfect, actually, but it looked, you know, you're like, oh, it gave you a little anxiety. You know, she won the American Cup in 2016, an alternate for the Olympics. Uh, tiny Small hop. hop. Tiny <laughs> hop. Not sure she even had to hop. Uh, she may argue that one, but I bet her coach Ar agrees with me. But you'll see right here this amazing, so difficult, Rikna, named after a gymnast, double A. Ah, oh. she'll get better at those landings. Now watch this ball. Now here's Gabby Wilson, big one and a half. Oh, oh just a bummer. little short. Yeah, again, trying too hard. Didn't you think? Yeah. And, and you know, you uh, want it. You don't want to ruin the stick train. You want to keep that going. It's so hard. And you know what? Literally, it looked like she was jogging down there. She is such so power. So easy. Yeah. Yeah. And look how high she is. I think she had just a, you know, a little bit of an arch. Do you notice that as she was twisting, and it might made a little bit of a difference for her in landing. So Sierra Brooks goes 9.925. Natalie Wojcik goes 9.875. A little low, I think. I would have liked to see that a little higher. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think they really noticed the, the sit. You know. Yeah. All right, Maggie Nichols. Already coming off a 10 on vault. She's done this before where she scored a 10 on bars as well. The same meet. Can she do it again on her senior night? Beautiful. I mean, just throws fantastic. the connection. Oh, you heard the crowd. Did you hear this? It's one of my favorite parts of competing. You hear him go, oh, so cool. And planned. Yep, <laughs> there it is. Did it again. Grand Slam before. Gym Slam. She has scored a, a 10 on slam. every single event as we take a look at her dismount one more time. Absolute perfection. Now she's fired up. Sometimes I think she I, wants I'm just that sitting 10. over here just shaking my head in awe. I mean, she every time I watch her, I'm just like mesmerized and I think everyone feels that way I mean it's, it's almost speechless in a way where you're just like how did she do that again I'm gonna miss that I think a lot of people are gonna miss Maggie Nichols she has really just become one of the best athletes in Oklahoma history absolutely and, and internationally too I mean in the gymnastic community everybody knows the name Maggie Nichols and now She's also setting the record, so everyone knows her name from now on. I agree. All right, we are wrapping up after two events. We're halfway done through this meet. We'll update you with scores on the back end of this break. Oklahoma travels to B. Michigan will head to floor. I was such a baby. My hair cracks me up with the side braid. <laughs> Gosh, here I'm going for a one and a half. A little out of control, college finish. I remember before that ball, I was just so excited to even throw the college finish for the first time. I remember I was so excited to compete beam for the first time. I think I was definitely really nervous for this beam routine. Double back dismount. 
I don't know how I did this all freshman year. Stayed on. <laughs> this is my favorite floor routine of all time. I still remember this whole routine. If you put the music on, I could do it probably. One and a half step out to double twist. My passes were pretty hard my freshman year. I wore my hair so different freshman year than I do now. It's so fun seeing all the people in the background, freshman year team. I miss it so much. the third event of the night just goes to show how solid she is not just physically but mentally for her to earn the trust of her team and KJ Kindler on an event that's really important to KJ uh, not only that you know I noticed earlier that um, she lead she led off vault and I thought you know she has scored two tens I mean most people would be kind of upset if they were first up in the lineup and that just shows you that coach Kindler really puts team first and that she counts on Olivia Troutman to have the poise to be able to go first and not freak out. That is another reason that she is up first on balance beam. And Her rightfully so, I mean, lights out, easy, easy flight series right there. She just looks like she has such an amazing sense of calm about her. I love that pike, the um, kick over or, or front toss in a pike position. You know, the Sooners are known for being consistent on balance beam and being aggressive on balance beam. They don't necessarily always do the most difficult routine ever, but they still wow. have the ability to just not What a start that Olivia Troutman has just crushed it in that leadoff position. So Oklahoma's ranked number one on vault and bars. They're number two on the balance beam and number three on the floor exercise. As we head over to Michigan, who's actually number five on the floor, and Nicoletta Kulos will start the Wolverines off tonight. Well, it's so nice to see the choreography. They have two different um, coaches that work the choreography. One is Polina and uh, Myliana is another, a former Sooner. And so she certainly has all the experience from um, working under Coach Kendler. But it's nice, I've talked to both of them about the way and how they enjoy choreographing. Miley just said, hey, I have been dancing since I was two years old and I love being able to express, um, you know, help the gymnasts express their personality through their movements. A little short, but not bad. I mean, a little short. Able to save it. Yeah. Bulos is one of those gymnasts who will only do two tumbling passes in this routine. She ends with a double pike, which is a new rule this season that you can get bonus if your last pass is a double flipping element. And your second pass is technically your last pass, so some of these gymnasts have made it work. Well, I have been very impressed with the difficulty from this Michigan team, uh, not just on floor exercise, but particularly on floor exercise. I mean, each routine is difficult. Watch that. I mean, sky high double pike. Uh, unfortunately, she looks a little fatigued. It's like um, she just not just an overall. And during this time of the season, it's easy to do. I mean, it's hard um, competing week after week after week. And so um, maybe just getting a little rest is going to help that first forward team. Well, Michigan has already won the Big Ten regular season championship. And let's take a look at what the judges are looking for on balance beam, Kelly. Well, definitely they have to have two tumbling skills connected and then a 180 split leap throughout uh, their routine. One thing that a lot of coaches uh, need well, they don't, it's not as easy for them as working on the rhythm and the continuous movement. Um, of course, no bobbles, no, you know, wiggles. Or, and then a nice high dismount and a stuff landing. And here's Jenna Dunn, the freshman for Oklahoma, coming off one of her best beam routines just last week. She's been working on a stuff.
stuck dismount and finally got it last week. It was an exciting moment for the Sooners. Well, she switched off different dismounts. She's tried a couple yeah. different ones. Yes, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, again, what talent to be able to switch in the middle of the season. Um, that right there sometimes is the nemesis for some gymnasts on balance team as they do all their hard skills and uh, mess up maybe on a full turn, a basic turn, but um, that was easy for her. She nailed it, and here's the landing. Oh, and she stuck it. Back to back, back sticks for Jenna. <laughs> are going to win this competition tonight. They're also going to win the national championship. Um, so that's two for two for the Sooners on balance beam. Olivia Troutman scores a 9.875 in the leadoff position. And Sierra Brooks is next for Michigan. She's ranked 10th in the all-around, and she is fun to watch. She's been the Big Ten Freshman of the Week six times and has competed in the all-around every single meet. And watch this first pass. It's a full in, but it's an open full in because why not need the extra rotation by grabbing your knees? She does it open. That's, that's the most difficult way to do this other than laid out, but um, which is amazingly <laughs> difficult. Just goes to show how good she is. She takes the skill to a higher level for no bonus, just because she can. And here we go. Here's the tucked full in. It's big. Look at that. She does it so easy. I mean so easy. But you know what I love also about her is that is she's not just a great tumbler. She can dance and move and smile and have a good time and leap. They have this ability to um, really extend is what I've noticed when I was watching them. Look at that. Beautiful extension in that full and a half in the air. Some of the best tumblers you'll see don't always have that. So if you took their picture in the middle of the air, you wouldn't see this straight line or to a pointed toes, but you see that with Sierra. Nicoletta Kulos scores a 9.7. Jenna Dunn goes 9.85. So they're gonna wanna drop that double, that 9.7 from the first uh, gymnast, and they probably will. Ending that double pike, 10th bonus. Um, again, an easy routine for her. I'm excited to watch this Michigan team on floor. They have it's tremendous easy. difficulty, in, especially their opening passes. A lot of E tumbling passes, which are really impressive to do. As we head back over to beam, Carly Woodard, the junior from Overland, Kansas, ranked number 18 on the balance beam. First team All-American on this event as well. You know, like Olivia Troutman, she does have such a calming presence about her when she competes. Coach Kindler says, especially in incredibly high pressure situations. One thing you're gonna see coming up, she has her, uh, her flight series. Flight series, thank you. Her foot right there, so unique. And yeah, being able to twist the aerial and then have to go straight backwards. Something I didn't want to do. Really nice. <laughs> and look, with that ease, awesome. I mean, I love that. Just, and it landed so soft. That's the one thing about gymnastic meets in person. You get to hear those landings. You get to see the dust fly. And so that's why I'm always like, come on, every, everybody, let's come watch the gymnastic meet. It is so different in person. Here's her famous scale. So beautiful. Just showing off that gorgeous flexibility. Always gets an applause from the fans in the <laughs> arena. It's also a nice opportunity to take a breath, you know, to do that. Look at the dismount. Okay, a stack landing. That's three. They want that. They listen to Coach Kendler. Great Side aerial. Carly Woodard. Yeah, beautiful to a back full. Oh, flares her arms to find the landing. Look right here. Oh, and she kind of questioned it a mm -hmm. little. All right, this is Abby Brenner on floor for Michigan. Another athlete who competes a full in and will end with a double pike. 
Watch right here. Does two flips and one twist. Good. Better than warm up. That's what you want to do. You don't want to win warm ups. You want to win the competition. You want to be a gamer. <laughs> That's right. I love how their leotards explode off the side. I mean, I don't always notice the leotards because I'm always watching the movement. But um, those are really cool how Michigan has those, that, that, that blast. This is cool choreography. I like how the music is different. Sierra Brooks scores a 9.85. Unfortunately, that last double pike probably cost her a tenth. Just a little short. And you can see right here that she is gearing up for this last tumbling pass. Hard up the arm. Great double pike. Well, you can see why they're ranked number five in the country. They have great choreography, and they also have amazing tumbling, and they're bringing it, they're hitting those routines. Good for Michigan. Reagan Smith is up next for Oklahoma. The freshman who trained at Texas Dream, she is ranked nine on the balance beam, one of her stronger events here. And of course, member of the gold medal winning 2018 U.S. World Championship team. She has accolades just like Maggie Nichols. That's the type of athlete that Reagan Smith is. Well, and I think a lot of people look at her as the next. You know, not, she could be the, not that there's ever going to be a Maggie Nichols, but she definitely has that capability. She has the charisma. She's able to pull it off like that she did even though that was a, a pretty significant bobble she knew i'm not falling off how to save it yeah she absolutely knew and did not panic she must have been pretty far off i was actually watching across the arena it was kind of hard to tell from here but she'd be pretty far off to bend over that much love that combination Swing down. Most people think, oh, that's got to hurt. But if you just catch yourself just right, you'll know how you know how to land that. It doesn't really hurt as much as you think. She's a career high 9975 on the balance beam. We'll probably not get that tonight because that flight series was just off. Well, again, she's learning, and this is just part of her journey. And it's okay. I mean, she needs to know that. You know, mistakes happen, and that's, why it's a, and that's why it's a team. You know, it's not just her. I mean, yes, yeah, she's later in the lineup, but that's why Olivia Troutman, who went first, her score may count. All right, Natalie Wojcik, you are not going to want to miss this floor routine. It is so difficult. Starts again with a full in, but her second pass is even, not even more difficult, but it is difficult, that's for sure. Right. Watch right here. Look how high she is. Nice. One thing I love about her, she is so pleasant to watch. You know, some people, they look, their face looks like they're thinking the whole time. And I love that she, she just generally looks like, eh, I got this. I mean, comforting. So the second pass is a front double full to a punch pike. Yeah. It's so cool. Watch right here. So. Two twists forward, so easy. right into double, uh, right into the <laughs> front pike. I love this choreography right here. She's like, oh, so cool. It's like it's kind of like an Egyptian, a snake moving through. This is one of the routines choreographed by Polina Chashevnikova. Last pass, she'll end with a Rudy. Just front hands for, or right into the full and a half, a front full and a half. <laughs> I almost want 
her to make it look harder. <laughs> she, no, you don't. So, no, I, you I, don't. No, but she's so like. <laughs> the um, point of gymnastics is to make difficult things look I easy, know, Kelly. But it almost looks so too easy for her. Yeah, that full in is just cakewalk to her. And now competing on team for Oklahoma. And, and that's her right second pass. Easy, easy. That's not an easy combination, and she does it effortlessly. <laughs> Abby Brenner goes 9.85 as we head back over to Balance Beam. This is Anastasia Webb. Check out those scores, 9.925 on both vault and bars. And that's honestly how her season has been going. Right. She's just that consistent, steady Eddie, but a high one. 9.9s, 9.8s, uh, or 9, well, no, not even 9.8s. 9.9s. 9 plus. <laughs> And you know what? She scored a 10 on this event, and I know, I mean, she is so capable of doing it again, and I, she's eager for it. And I, I have a feeling it's just gonna happen. I mean, she pulls up like, I got this. She's already finishing, moving on to the next move. It's crazy because if you have a Maggie Nichols on your team, you can somewhat be a little overshadowed. And Anastasia Webb is ranked fifth in the all-around in the country. I know it. She's so talented and so consistent. Well, and, and I think the, I mean, the gymnastic community probably has underestimated her. Here's her dismount. Ariel right to pull, and a stuck land, another stuck landing. This is exactly what Coach, what Coach Ken wants to see from her team. Always giving corrections from KJ Kindler. You can never be perfect. I think even when you get a 10, I think there might be corrections from KJ Kindler. I don't know. When I got my first 10, I knew it was a 10, and I looked up at my coach, and she's like, yep, yep that's you a got 10. <laughs> All right, here's a look at Gabby Wilson. She also does an open full-in. It is so impressive in that first pass. All of the full-ins for the Wolverines here tonight. This is such a fun routine because it's so upbeat. Here we go. Watch. Ooh. Too easy. Too easy for her. Well, and watching that round effect handspring, I'm like, ooh, I'm not sure she's going to get this. And she was still able to just pull it out. She has to control her power. Natalie Wojcik goes 9-9. Nine, nine. Second. Again, looks easy. But tumbling a lot of people are like oh are you sure that's hard it is it doesn't look as hard as these double flips but and, and a full in naturally is harder but front tumbling is difficult it's hard to find that landing and you have to really have great air sense i kind of feel like they need to turn this music up <laughs> right? everybody else kind of moving because i'm i would agree I'm moving a little bit over here wanting to <laughs> dance this routine Ends with a double back. Interesting the way she runs into that with her arms up. Definitely different, but it doesn't matter because they don't deduct for things like that. They just want to see that high double back and a stuck landing with your chest up, and she did it. Great, great routine. Anastasia Webb scores a 9.85 as Maggie Nichols gets set for her third event tonight. Now, of course, Maggie has scored a 10 on this event. But not this year. Not this year. <laughs> not this year. Oh, she knows it. <laughs> you know, that's what a champion does is, um, yeah, she has scored a 10, but she she wants another one. She wants to be able to say, did she just pull that out? Is that new? I mean, I feel like Maggie changes her beam and floor routines every week. I can't keep up with the amount of skills right. that she has in her back pocket. She just has a vocabulary, and so many gymnasts these days, and coaches for that matter, often do not teach numerous skills that you get to pick from to put in your routine. They, they just say, oh, we're going to learn a certain set of skills, and it's very limiting. Look at that oversplit. On the first. Here she gets ready for this front air. 
Mario. Clean. Sharp. She's so confident. I mean, you look at her and she, I, I'm scared just watching. I'm like, I mean, if I was a gymnast, I'd be like, whoa, she's going to win. <laughs> she looks so confident. Look at that. Well, she yeah, does win. Again, again. She does it. <laughs> individual all-around champion. She's a winner. <laughs> She's not only a part of teams that win national championships, she wins her own national championships as well. All day long. And you know, part of me is sad and then uh, that she's gonna be done, and part of me cannot wait to see what she does next because she's that person that you know she's gonna come out on top whatever she chooses to do. Absolutely has a bright future. As we head back over to floor, this is Lexi Funk, the team captain for Michigan. She'll start with a double tuck. At least she did last week. Oh. Double pike this week. She is working. I talked to um, Deb Plocky, her their head coach, who's just done a fantastic job. She's such a leader for the Michigan team, bringing in all these different coaches. And she explained that they put Lexi in last because they want to see if all the other girls hit, that she can do this last tumbling pass, a double back. And they need her postseason to have this second double back in, at the end of her routine for that 10th bonus. Love that skill. Just a little nice dance move named after Syllabus, Danielle Syllabus. Trying to get the crowd involved. Has a little feel with Jordan, um, uh, Jordan Draper. Cute little smile. Here, come on, pull it in. Nice, she did it. Exactly Gets what they want to easy. See. Yeah. No problem. No worries. All right. That's Her team's a win. Be fired up about that, that right one. there is a win for um, Michigan. Not necessarily the competition per se, but to to end their floor rotation like that. That is a goal accomplished. She's following Gabby Wilson's nine nine two five. Maggie Nichols goes nine nine five. As Vanessa Denise, just a freshman, will do an exhibition routine on the balance beam. This score will not count, just to get some reps. Such an elegant gymnast to watch. She has these great lines. She needs the numbers in a pressure situation. All freshmen do. She again has that same flight series as Carly Woodard, the side aerial into the back handspring. Not a common flight series. It is not. Front aerial. You see those a little more common these days because of the bonus that they get from performing it. It is a blind landing. Um, I mean, you see the beam, but you just don't see it very long. <laughs> this is gonna give her the experience so when the Maggie Nichols of the world are gone from the center team, they can put in Vanessa and know that she can hit. Here's her dismount. A routine for Vanessa. Right, and another hit routine. That's exactly her stuck, <laughs> stuck landing. Yeah, she's excited about that. So Michigan goes 49-4-5 on floor, and OU goes 49-4. So Michigan now scored the Sooners on this last rotation. All right, we are three events in. We just have one more to go. Oklahoma will round out the competition on floor, and Michigan will head over to the balance beam. I was so nervous. I can like still feel myself shaking. Ah, so fired up. I miss it. I was so nervous. I wasn't supposed to be competing bars. I was just alternate. 
And then they said I was going in, and I was like, oh gosh, you're kidding me. I cannot wait to get off these bars. Here we go. I wanted to stick that so bad. I always had so much trouble sticking my dismount. I'm just so happy to be <laughs> Crazy, a lot of people are like scared to compete beam, but I think it was my favorite to compete. I was more nervous for the other events I did this day than my beam routine. You can always tell by the full turn. That was always my first skill. If that was good, my nerves were all right. I remember the student section being right there, and I like kept trying to make eye contact with them like the whole time because it was like all the cheerleaders and stuff. Oh, this is my favorite part. <laughs> All right, Brie, let's do this thing. Oh, I was so proud of myself after that. That was really, I think, one of the toughest. Floor was always really hard for me to compete. I was really nervous. Here with Maggie Nichols' mom, Gina Nichols. Well, senior night, what's the emotion like for you right now? Oh, uh, we have mixed emotions going on. We're both really excited um, that she's had a great career and, and is ending on a great note, but it's also a little sad, too, because it's going to be over. I mean, it wasn't even just um, the NCAA, um, but she's had a whole lifetime of career. So it's, 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 yeah, there's some certainly mixed emotions here. Well, can you take me back to when she first made the decision to come to Oklahoma? What you guys thought, mom and dad, uh, coming so far away from Minnesota? Yeah, um, you know what? We were really excited that she chose Oklahoma. She went to a camp here when she was just a little girl and like 10 or 11 years old. And since then, that she never could get Oklahoma out of her. That's where she was going to go. So, yeah, she, we're, we're super excited that she ended up um, in Oklahoma. Obviously, she made the best choice there is. They're the, the best team in the country, the best coaching staff in the country. Um, and she's really happy. She's been really happy here. And Dad John is here as well. Okay, we've seen her put up perfect 10 after perfect 10 after perfect 10. What makes Maggie Nichols Maggie Nichols that she's able to do that night in and night out? She's Maggie. I don't know what else to say. You know, she is what she is, and she does what she does, and she can do it. You know, she puts her mind to it, and she goes at it. Has that been her whole life? Yeah, she's been an outstanding athlete her whole life. She's been focused her whole life. Even as a young girl, she was a super focused athlete. So she's just she just continued on. How special has it been for you to, to watch her career here at Oklahoma? I didn't catch that question. But How special has it been to watch her career at Oklahoma? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, there's no words to describe it. She's She's done tremendous. She's the best of the best. She's done great. Well, we appreciate you guys' time. Enjoy senior night. She's still got one more left here, so it's not over yet. We appreciate your time. Meg, back over to you. All right, that was Lauren Farley to lead off Michigan on beam, and Jordan Draper will lead off Oklahoma on floor. And Jordan's mounting with a nice, beautiful double pike. Her confidence is really starting to show this year. She's just such a fun kid, great personality. There's that front tumbling that we were talking about that looks easy but isn't always easy. <laughs> Has a career high 995 on this event. This Texas themed floor routine. She's from Texas. She's proud to be a Texan and the choreograph the choreography really shows it. But you know what I love too about Jordan is she really gets the whole team pumped up. I mean she's so you know there's always that person in your life who's got tons of energy and they're just optimistic and enthusiastic and she's that for the team and she is a great lead off for the Sooners. Not just gymnastically but um, you know, just their energy level and their excitement. And, that, and that's a large part of what floor exercise is. Good way to start off for the Sooners. <laughs> Fun. That's one of those things you want to go home and kind of try to do, like dance around your living room. Is anybody else doing that? I'm not. Oh, I'm not doing that, Okay, no. okay. <laughs> But you know, to each their own. So Lauren Farley, wow, big score for her. 9-9 nine, nine 
for Michigan in that leadoff position as we bring you to Maggie O'Hara. Career high 9.875 on the balance beam. The senior from Lexington, South Carolina. She has a very cool dismount, so don't walk away. She also has um, that flight series, that uncommon flight series that seems to be becoming common. <laughs> yeah. Right here, side aerial. Oh, oh wow, she was really off to miss that significantly, just to miss her, her foot. Almost looked like her arms collapsed as well. Just well, she was off on she that was aerial. So off that yeah. it, I mean, at that point, you know you're off, and so it's better to collapse with your arms so you can, you know, not over rotate to your back. You know, a fall like that, you just, you just want to get up and go. Can I do that again, real quick? Because <laughs> you know you can nail it. Well, these athletes, the numbers they put in over the course of their life, they have trained these skills by the thousands easily this is the dismount look full and a half love that. isn't that cool i love that she almost hurdles into it that's uh -huh. so cool the side aerial right into the back full and a half different than a lot of the centers do a full and it's easy easier and i love that she pushes the limit here does the full and a half dismount all right for floor what are the judges looking for here kelly well, of course, they're looking for high tumbling. Everybody's looking for that. Um, they want to see flipping and twisting, front and back, um, form in the air, controlled landings, of course, expressive and fun, entertaining dance, big, large leaps, last tumbling pass, a tenth bonus, as you mentioned earlier, if you do a flip, a double flip. The Jade Dagovea, the senior, is the epitome of entertaining dance here. Starts with the front double full, nicely done. I love that she shows the intensity, but also is pulling out that smile here and there. Uh, nice, I like that. It's a performance. It is, it is, and, and Coach Kimmler really works on that. I think all of the colleges, the universities are working on that these days. It's not just gymnastics. Now this is the part, the theme, she starts out as a caterpillar, and blossoms into a butterfly, and this is where you see that. And it really helps the gymnast to be able to have a theme to, to personify. It gives them that um, feeling and, and emotion as they dance. I think her floor routine really reflects on her career. Mm -hmm. She has blossomed in the four years Aww. that she has been here. Knows where the camera is, I like it. Beautiful last pass, nails it. Oh, and she knows it. <laughs> That's so gorgeous. What a great routine. Aw, even a, KJ's, I think, a little emotional. Well, that caps off Jade Dagovea's Oh, look at that. We have shirtless football players over here that spelled Jade. That's hysterical. <laughs> so Just fun. missed it. So fun. That caps off Jade's regular season inside the Lloyd Noble Center. The Sooners will host a regional here, so not quite done yet for these seniors. As we head back over to Beam, Sierra Brooks, a freshman who trained at Aspire Gymnastics. Watch this first tumbling combination back handspring layout layout i mean rock solid and you know what here they were just having to count a fall i mean could have you been. throw a and triple flight right two of those being layouts that is so impressive switch leap switch leap like i said when i was watching michigan earlier they have improved, in my opinion, so much with difficulty on every event, but and not just the difficulty, but also this beautiful extension. And that comes from... It's difficulty done well. It is, it is. I mean, they're solid, they look confident. And I mean, even though they've had a couple of mistakes tonight, they are still a team that the centers are gonna have to continue to contend with. Watch it that. With the double back. Double back dismount. I mean, that's an elite level routine that she had competes. And to be doing that every single week, elites don't compete every single week. 
Right. Collegiate gymnasts compete every single week. That is a huge dismount. Well, so hard. To take the, the chance, um, because it's harder to land that than all these other dismounts. Oh, for sure. And so to do a double back knowing, wow, it's going to be a little bit harder to stick and take that risk. Here's Emma LaPinta, the only event she will compete here tonight, but throws a nice triple full to start out this floor routine, a rare tumbling pass in college gymnastics. Well, you know, some gymnasts, they feel like they're either a flipper or a twister, right? And if you're really great, you're both. So look at this, three nice. twists in the air, so hard. She has scored a career high 993 times this season. She's really gaining confidence. She's someone the Sooners are definitely counting on, not just this year, but in the future, and not just on floor exercise. Jade Degovea goes 9925. Big score for her on her senior night. I love that Emma is starting to enjoy her dance, perform her routine for the crowd, not just for the judges. Might be one of her best leap combinations. She sometimes struggles on that, and that was beautiful for her. Now watch the last tumbling pass. Ooh. Ooh. Didn't Almost quite held know the where she too yeah. long. Yeah, she didn't quite know where she was. She thought she was lower, so she held on and pulled a little bit and stayed in the, the tuck for just a hair too long. Nice, however, staying on her feet. When you over-rotate a double back, it's pretty easy to fall backwards yeah. on your bottom instead of taking that step. A lot of rotation going backwards. Mm -hmm. As we head back over to Beam, this is Lexi Funk. So take, take a look at those scores, 9-9-9-0-9-9. Now, Michigan able to drop that 9.0 if the rest of the lineup hits, but it's it's hard to follow a fall that early in the lineup. It really puts the pressure on the rest of the athletes competing on beam nonetheless. She has a really cool element coming up in her routine that you just don't see very often. And it's a full twisting straddle jump. It's a popa. So I haven't hopefully seen that she'll do this in NCAA gymnastics no, in a long time. Right, right. It is so easy. Let's switch side. We'll turn. Right here. Oh, she did the three quarter. She did it last week. And you know what? That's sometimes something you can decide in the air. Like if you're doing that. Adjust. Yeah, yeah. you realize, whoa, I'm not gonna make, if I do a popa, I do the full, I'll fall. But I might be able to squeeze out the three quarter. Ends with a nice aerial fall. It's another stuck routine. That's exactly what they're looking. And maybe they, she pulled it out because of that. You never really know. Yeah. I mean, it could be warm ups with kind of cuckoo and playing she, it safe yeah. because, you know, following a fall. Right. It's still a very nice, clean routine. And the end on balance beam, it's hard. Absolutely. They're making up ground right now. Now look at these scores for Maggie. 10, 9, 9, 5, 9, 9, 5. And she's capable of putting up a huge score on this floor exercise. But she's following Emma LaPinta, who scored a 9.7. So it's rare to see Maggie in this fourth spot. But now she's only doing two passes. So. They kind of have to move her up and let everyone like Anastasia Webb and Reagan Smith follow her. But this is a cool opening pass, including dance elements. It's new. There you go. I love that. You never see that. I love that. Well, like we talked about earlier, she has so many tricks in her bag. And um, versatility like... is her strength. <laughs> well, and I think she thrives on it, to be honest. So tumbling is over for her. She will dance the rest of this floor routine. But it was perfect. I mean, every landing was great. The air positions in the air were beautiful. Now she's just having fun. It's funny, I'm looking around at all the fans in the crowd. Everyone has their phone out. They want to get the final Maggie Aww. Nichols regular season floor routine. Careful, I might drop a tear over here. <laughs> How about that? Oh. 
Such, such a special person. What a role model, too, for all um, gymnasts. I mean, she has overcome so many different things. And I mean, she's done it with such uh, grace. And, I mean, I just, she's a person you want to know. I asked her fellow classmates how they would describe Maggie Nichols. So Bree Showers and Jade Degovea. They both said, Maggie is a pillar of strength. And I thought that was really fitting. And they both said it. Right. Oh, interesting. They both said it, yeah. Right. And I think that really just goes to show that they believe it. She's a pillar of strength. As we head back over to the balance beam, Natalie Wojcik for Michigan, 2019 NCAA beam champion. Yeah, we're watching the best of the best right here. You know, I talked about earlier how she seems so calm and relaxed and poised. And, you know, on balance beam, that's what you have to have in order to win a national champ. You can't be rocked it, it mentally. I she mean, has, go ahead. She has the program record for single season balance beam scoring average. The best Michigan has seen on the balance beam in history. An easy triple flight, again. I mean, her face doesn't even reflect like a, um, a pulse. <laughs> you know, she's just gonna like, wow, I just, I did that, it's no big deal. I'm gonna do it, you know, tomorrow too. And you couldn't pay week. me to do a triple flight when I was a gymnast in college. Could not pay me to do it. Here she gets ready for the last, her dismount. Great oh, routine. That tiny hop, I mean, it could have been watching a Tano right there. You don't see that very often from, you know, your competitors at a home competition. And um, she's one of them that you would see it from. Maggie Nichols scores a 995. She goes 39.85 in the all around tonight on her senior night. What a great night for her. But Anastasia Webb, not too far off. She's also having a fantastic night. And this floor routine, one of the best in college gymnastics in terms of artistry. Absolutely, and presentation. <laughs> She has a style like no other. People nope. gravitate, her, their eyes just like cannot stop looking at her. Opens up with a really nice front double full. You know, she's using a lot more energy in her dance tonight. Um, sometimes she, I, I see that she gets fatigued and part of it's because she's in every single competition on every event. Bad guy. Twisting connection makes and, it look easy. And so funny because you would not think this about her if you talked to her on the street. You know, she's just the sweetest thing. But you know, Coach Kendler has an ability to pull that out of out of their out of her athletes. She finds what it is that makes them um, emotional and and be able to dance it and perform it. She's really great at it. I think back of Chase Caps. Oh yeah. You know, she could do the exact same thing with every athlete she has. Great routine for Anastasia Webb. Ends that with a nice Rudy. Following the Maggie Nichols 995, Natalie Wojcik goes 9-9. Thank you for Back over to Beam, this is Abby High School, sophomore. Just broke this Beam lineup the last couple weeks, but has a career high 9925, so pretty good. One thing that needs to be noted is that Michigan is competing with primarily freshmen and sophomores. 79% of the routines you see from Michigan are freshmen and sophomore. That is unheard of. and so. Not only are they great this year, they're going to be great next year and uh, the year after. And so it's amazing 
to watch them. I mean, their first meet of the year, they scored a 48-1 on balance speed. Wow. And I asked Coach Bucky, what was the problem here? And she said, nerves. They were freshmen. They were scared. They had to get that anxiety out. And look where they are now. Amazing. Ranked fifth in the country. That's where they are now. Right. There's the dismount full and a half. A stick would have been icing on the cake, but still a great routine. Anastasia Webb scores a 9.95 following Maggie Nichols as freshman Reagan Smith gets set to anchor this lineup. Look at her walk out on Darn. the floor like that. I like the confidence. <laughs> well, that's what she has grown into in the last couple of months. Just enjoy and listen to this and watch this routine. She's just got charisma oozing out of her. Easy double top. One thing I really enjoy is coming up right here. She tumbles and does this huge kick right to her nose, just showing off that flexibility. Right out of a tumbling pass. You've really seen this athlete grow so much in her freshman season. You really have, and I know, and there's more to come. I mean, she's great. Three more years she's of it. She's good, but she's going to blossom even more. She doesn't even know it yet. <laughs> we see it. We see it coming. Here's that last pass. Ends double pike. Had to oh. work for it. You know, I think she knew she was tired and she pushed, just ran and pushed a little bit harder, which she knew she needed to, which is more important to get it making around. it and stepping out of bounds. But that is an area right there that uh, would cost them a national championship. So she has got to um, hone in on those landings. As we head back over to Beam for Michigan. Just an exhibition for the Wolverines. This is Maddie Mariani. Really pretty combination, showing off her flexibility. So the Wolverines go 49-425 on beam, able to drop that 9.0. The team really rallied together. That's a big score to have a fall second. That means, I mean, those athletes were mentally really, really strong. Absolutely. And she also is, is demonstrating that same capability. And this, again, is giving her the opportunity in case they need her in the lineup. Oh, what a routine. Perfect landing. Like, you know, she, might be, routine. she might be saying, hey, put me in. I'm ready to go. Yeah. She looks ready to go. All right, so Reagan Smith goes 9775. That will be a 10th deduction that she stepped out of bounds. And we have a really special moment inside the Lloyd Noble Center. Bree showers. Her career is over, but the team is able to watch one of her best floor teams on the big screen inside this venue as Bree looks on. What a great idea for Coach Penler to say, hey, let's watch this amazing athlete. Even though she's not out on the floor, she is the glue that has kept this team together. I've been told this is a surprise. The team did not yeah. know this was happening. Uh -huh. Bree is a natural born leader. Her attitude as someone is, is something that we would want from any of our children. Any employee, she's just that young lady that exemplifies everything that you want to see. A lot of tears being shed right now from the Sooners. Well, they're just so proud. I mean, she has such a positive energy that you just, you really gravitate toward her. 
and it's been sad to not be able to watch her finish her career, but I admire her in so many ways. We all should. What a moment for Bree Showers. Not able to actually compete on the floor exercise, but Sooner fans, her team, the coaches, able to honor her in a really special way by showing that floor routine. That was a moment. What a moment for senior Bree Showers. All right, that's going to do it for us. We will take one more break, and we will come back and recap this meet. Welcome back to the Lloyd Noble Center as we wrap up this awesome meet. Oklahoma will win 198.1 to the Michigan's 197.25. That final event score is brought to you by Taco Mayo. And Jess is standing by by the winning head coach for Oklahoma, KJ Kindler. Well, here with head coach KJ Kendler. Coach, you talked about how Michigan was going to be the best opponent that you guys have seen all season. Senior night, managing emotions. How did you feel like your team responded to that tonight? Well, first of all, credit to Michigan. They had an excellent meet tonight. Beam was spectacular, so they pushed us. And, and that's hard to do. You know you're getting pushed on senior night in your own arena, and you're, you're trying to handle all those emotions. But our team handled it well. Certainly we made some errors, but I really thought we ended on a bang and just excited to move on to our final not done yet inside this building. Of course, you're going to be in the postseason, but celebrating your seniors tonight. Maggie Nichols, what a way for her to go out on senior night. Had another perfect end. Can you just describe what it's been like to coach her over these last four years? I can't. It's indescribable, really, you know. I mean, when someone can walk out on any given night and get a 10 on possibly four events, I mean, that is special, and that's not something you see all the time in gymnastics. And she's been a very special treat, not just for the Oklahoma Sooners, but for the entire NCAA. Before you guys move closer into postseason, how do you feel about where this team is at moving into this latter half of the season? I feel great. You know, we're really just starting to catch our stride right now. We're getting a little healthier, and so I think we have great depth, and we just got to keep keep pushing forward. I think for you, besides just Maggie, but this overall, the senior class, Jade and Bree, just what they've meant to this program. Oh, I can't, you know, Jade, Bree, um, Bree's spirit, you know, she's been injured all year. She's there every single day, you know, putting it out there in the gym, moving boards, moving mats for her teammates. Like, what a big heart she has. And Jade Dagovea, like, just her facial expressions alone could entertain you for days. Like, such an intelligent woman. And then, of course, Maggie, like, it's a class we're going to miss a lot. Coach, appreciate your time. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Meg, back over to you. Thank you to KJ and Jessica Cootie. As we bring you to the highlights, it had to be the two seniors. We'll start out with Jade Dagovea first. Just an awesome ball, an awesome night for her. Not just on the, um, the ball, but also on the uh, uh, uneven bars. Just phenomenal. She's only going to get better, too. As we head to floor, her opening pass. What I loved about watching her tonight is not just her tumbling, but she was on fire emotionally. She just let it go, and she just enjoyed every single moment. Yes, her tumbling's phenomenal. I agree with that, but her emotion was raw and real, and you could see that also from listening to Coach Kendler talk about each of the young ladies. And Maggie Nichols, a 39.85 in the all-around. She scores another perfect 10. This is our loves routine of the meet. I mean, just incredible. Like, I, I don't even know where to start or stop with her. I mean, she's just. She you is, start with tens and you end with tens. I know. I know. She's just. She is um, just this one special woman, and um, you know, we're just. I'm just relishing it, and I'm glad that they have video so I can rewatch it and rewatch it. So, and and she's not quite done. I mean, we still have some more meets for um, this this season she's got you know minnesota uh, coming up this upcoming weekend and then big 12s and, and then that meet is sold out by the way yeah i mean she, her home state is gonna, all going to be there to watch her and they should because i mean she is phenomenal and she deserves the respect that she's receiving uh, not just in minnesota but all over the country a very impressive young lady 
and here with a nice double pike. She's able to stick just about every single landing that she competes as a Sooner as her mom and her dad watches on the senior on her senior night. Special, special night for fans to watch her. And Kelly, as we wrap up this meet, Oklahoma goes 198.1 to Michigan's 197.475. But final thoughts wrapping up this meet. This is the fifth 198 for the Oklahoma Sooners this season. I know. They're, they're incredible. And, and they're not over. And, and although it wasn't like a as, as uh, close of a competition as we thought it might have been in the beginning, it was still very great. I mean, and Michigan's not done. I mean, they, they could totally come back uh, either at a regionals or a national competition and give the Sooners another run for their money. So it's going to be fun to watch. Michigan ranked number five right now. They're still trying to fight for that one seed. They'll have to be number four heading into the postseason as we take a look at the road ahead for the Oklahoma women's gymnastics team that's brought to you by Buick GMC. The season's coming to a close. I can't believe this season has gone by as fast as it has. Oklahoma will keep compete at Minnesota next time out. And then it's the Big 12 championship in Morgantown, West Virginia. And then Oklahoma will host an NCAA regional. So Sooner fans, make sure to come out. That's going to be a whole week of exciting gymnastics. You're not going to want to miss it. All right, that will do it for us tonight inside the Lloyd Noble Center. Thank you so much to our producer, Zach Tilly, and our entire crew. For Jessica Cootie on the sideline, my partner, Kelly Garrison-Funderburg, I am Meg McDonald. We will see you next time, Sooner Nation.